Ms. Kisa, are you ready? Yes. Please call the roll. Banks, Blasco, Chambers, Present. Dietz, Here. Foster, Here. Phillips, Here. Wallace, Present. White, Here. Chairman Clifton. Here. Uh, I did call the meeting of the North Rock Planning Commission to order, and the roll was called. Uh, is there a motion? Yes. Motion made and Seconded. Seconded that those commissioners not present be excused. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, thank you. Please turn off your cell phones or mute them. And uh, and uh, if you are going to speak, please come to the microphone and give us your name and speak into the microphone. Uh, if you are here for the uh, item special use case number one to allow a mobile home in an R2 zone located at 7001 Faulkner Lake Road. Uh, the applicant has asked for a postponement of that, so it will not be heard today. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chambers. Uh, uh, on, um, how many postponements is that? This is the second, okay. The issue was notice there was one that didn't get mailed correctly, one of the seven or something so okay so next time would be the last time he is automatically on the agenda correct Got it. okay good uh we will move right in uh, we have been submitted a copy of the minutes from our previous meetings are there any additions or corrections to the minutes move for approval second. motion made and second to be approved as submitted all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed thank you we'll move into the development review <coughs> committee mr don chambers Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Development Review Committee met and considered item SD 2018-8, Spring Hill Campus Baptist Memorial Medical Lots 1AR and 1BR, replat of hospital property west of Spring Hill Drive. The applicant was, a pre was present and agreed to items one through six in subsections, and with that, the Development Review Committee recommends <coughs> approval. <coughs> present. <laughs> Uh, is there anyone here representing uh, this application? Spring Hill Campus Baptist Memorial? The applicant wasn't able to make it. He's, but okay. he, asked, he asked for staff to represent him if, if there was any questions, but he, he was not able to get here in time. Okay, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against this application? Any comments? Uh, any, has the applicant saw the uh, requirements from the planning department? Yes. And he approved those? Yes. Any comments made to the commissioners? On the application, please call the roll. Um, Blaska? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Eats? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Wallace? Yes. White? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. Uh, we'll move to item B, Mr. Chambers. <laughs> item B is SD 2018-9, River Rees at North, at, at North Shore, Lot 6A, Site Plan Review of a Commercial Lot located at 5410 North Shore Court. The applicant was present, agreed to items 1 through 9 in subsections, and with that, the Development Review Committee recommends approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, are there any comments from anyone in the audience? on this application, staff representing this as well. Uh, would you please have, uh, anyone have any comments on this application? <laughs> any comments from any of the commissioners? All in favor, aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, thank you. <laughs> item D, I'm sorry, sorry, item C. I messed up here. Let's see. Robert McNutt, subdivision lot one, preliminary plat and site plan review of commercial property located at 5322 Chiquito Road. The applicant was present, agreed to items one through ten and subsections, and with that, the development review committee recommends approval. Second. Motion made and seconded to be approved as submitted. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this application? Any comments from any of the commissioners? Chairman? Uh, Foster? You know, at our subcommittee meeting, uh, there was a question about him meeting that requirement for the fire hydrants. Is there a fire chief? Is he, uh, has that been met? Are we all over to work something out there? 
Yes, we okay, can. great. Thank you. Take care of that. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, excellent. And you uh, approve of all the uh, requirements from the subdivision design review committee? Yeah, they are asking, yes, sir. They're asking for a waiver on the sidewalk requirement, and they managed, the owners managed to get it signed by everybody but the mayor. They got the, the uh, alderman, so we'll get the mayor to sign it and, and turn we, that in. Okay. We'll consider yeah. that our next meeting. Okay. We'll just amend this report. Mr. White. And what was the hardship on the sidewalks? What's the hardship was essentially that there, are, there there's basically none out in that area and it's um, not a very well developed area at all and they're they're in the future going to move their main office up to near highway 161 there here's here's my only mr problem. white the reason the subdivision development review committee that's not a hardship i know but the development review committee considered the the street to be an industrial street and industrial streets do not require sidewalks. And why why do they have to ha why do they have to have the form? Because it, because it's not its its use and function is an industrial street, but it's not actually built as an industrial street. But my comment still goes back to the same okay. thing. Ten years ago, we built sidewalks in the city of North Little Rock because the same scenario. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago said, well, we're never going to have sidewalks, and I'm not being a hard case. I'm just a taxpayer of North Little Rock, and then all of a sudden. We're by taking a one cent sales tax and we're building sidewalks that we never thought would be needed that are needed that. So my concern is that I think sidewalks should not be white. I agree Thank with you 100%. You. But as I said, the, okay. that was position. This will review. vote for or against the sidewalks here, but ultimately it will go to the council and they will require or not require sidewalks. No. No, that's not how it works. He, if he has a waiver in hand, I understand. We can choose to waive or not waive them, and that's the end of the subject. But if it goes to the council, the city council has the ability to do what they want to do. Yeah, they do at any time. So, yeah. okay. So, if they're wanting to override something that they've given you authority to do, they have that ability. If, okay. if they want to, they haven't done it. But okay. in the application, uh, <coughs> is it requiring the sidewalks? Yes because we did not have the waiver in hand to waive them okay does someone want to make a motion to uh waiver uh, grant his waiver or recognize his waiver so move okay second I'm not gonna second. second okay motion is made and seconded that we consider or grant his waiver for this application is that Without correct the mayor's signature on the waiver Contention on receiving the mayor's signature. Mr. White. Okay. And and again, my comment is let's let let's let City Hall deny the 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 or grant the waiver. Let's as a planning commission, we've been through this for years, and no offense to the project, mm -hmm. but but we've been through this for years, and this has ba been batted around, and we all finally come agreement, but we're getting more and more waivers, and we shouldn't be giving waivers again. And we're going to get right back in the same area that we were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So I think we ought to allow uh, the council and the mayor to waive these. But our recommendation should be not to waive. That's my opinion. Because I know how much it costs the city to put all those sidewalks in all over Offer the country. Vote. Okay. But first of all, we have a motion. Who made the motion? Okay. And your first motion was... To, to grant, grant the waiver to grant the waiver and then, on him getting okay, obtain so, the mayor's signature but, okay so you but that you amended your motion after it was seconded by mr. Dietz and so now what what what's on the table is a an amendment of your motion right. by yourself by the one who made the motion and so the mo what's on the table is uh, grant the waiver uh, con uh, uh, with the condition that uh, the mayor signs on the condition that the mayor signs the waivers that that's the, correct that's correct okay so that's what's before the council so we worked that into two amendments there's only there's really only one amendment Mr. Uh, uh, grant the waiver yeah he granted yes and he he immediately he decided that he wanted to amend it he amended his own motion okay do we need another? Do we, yeah. Okay. So yes, we do need a second to his, oh, his amendment. amendment. Yes. Okay. 
Read it back to him, Ms. Keisha, what we got. Uh, there was a motion made to what I got was to recognize the waiver. What I heard. That's what I got. Right. Subject and to it the was mayor's second. signature. He wants, it, and the motion should read subject to the mayor's signature. Right. Is that correct, Mr. Foster? Yes. Can we do that in one amendment? Yes. Good. Okay. You have spoken against the amendment. Yes. Any other comments from anyone on it, Ms. Velasco? What I heard was that we recognize the waiver upon approval of the mayor. That's not how it's going to read. No, in the in the design review committee reg, uh, requirements, it requires the sidewalk. Right. He is asking us to take that requirement. I understand. The amendment is stating recognize, not waive. Yes. That's what I wanted to be sure. Well, uh, well, recognize no, it waive. No, no, it's, be the no, same it's not thing. recognize. I'm saying waive, uh, grant the waiver, please. Right. Yeah, I think that the, the, the motion is, the amended motion is to grant the waiver conditioned. Ah, yes. Correct. Got it. Okay. Any other comments on this motion? Please call the roll. Hang on, Mr. Mr. White. On section 5.A, this provides a five foot sidewalk, so that's what Mr. Foster is trying to weigh. Yes. But are we leaving in the other parts a five foot of green space between the sidewalk and the curb if there's not going to be a sidewalk? So if, there's not, if there's not going to be a sidewalk, there won't be any green space. Right. Okay. One of green space, Mr. Chambers, this is what I was asking. But when you don't build the sidewalk, the whole thing is green okay. space. So it's, so it's obviate, it obviates the second part. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, on the uh, on the amendment <coughs> or the, on the amendment motion, please call the roll. Banks. Yes. Velasco. Yes. Chambers. No. Dietz. Yes. Foster. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Wallace. Yes. White. No. Chairman Clifton. Yes. The uh, the amend the motion to delete that from this passed or did not pass, so it will require regulation. You can take that and go to the city council and see if they will pass it without that. Am I making myself clear on that? I no, thought we, it was more yeses than I'm not trying to argue. We approved the waiver. We approved the waiver. Mm -hmm. That was voted. It voted to pass. I was right. not to be disrespectful. I was just I'll trying catch to, up here in a few minutes. That's okay. I'm <laughs> I was sorry, mentally counting. Yeah. Okay. So maybe, then it, you get the mayor's signature and you have a waiver. And bring it back to whom do I bring it? Who do I gotcha, Sean? We'll bring it to you. Okay. Okay. On the application as amended, please call the roll. Banks? Yes. Blasco? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. White? Yes. Wallace? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. I okay. asked that. You can uh, get with Mr. Spencer and he can tell you what okay. to do. Thank you. And I asked staff to please be sure they get those waivers in early next time. <laughs> well, yes. anyway. Well, I'll make, we'll make certain apologies for that. So. All right. Thank you. Item D, Park Hill Edition, Lot 6A and 6B, Block 135, replant of residential property located at 1522 Skyline Drive. The applicant was present and agreed to items 1 through 5 in subsections. Development Review Committee recommends approval. Second. Motion made and seconded. This application be approved as submitted. Is the applicant here? Okay. Any comments from anyone on this application? Any comments made to the commissioners? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Item E is our agenda edition, lot 10R, replant of commercial property located at 515 North Olive Street. Uh, the applicant was present, agreed to items one through seven and subsections. And with that, the Development Review Committee recommends approval. Second. Motion made and second to be approved as submitted. Does anyone in the audience want to speak on this application? 
any comments from any of the commissioners? I have a question, Mr. Spencer, on this. Uh, <coughs> What kind of what kind of guidelines are going to be set on the development of these two lots? On Park Hill? Yeah. Park on the Park Hill. Hill? Okay. Thank you. It'll be the same as the regular property. Any other R2 zone property in the city. Okay. There's nothing special or set out there any different than the lots next door to it okay, okay. Uh, any comments any commissioners I on the app the, the, mm -hmm. the covenants have probably expired yeah, yeah. okay uh, all in favor aye aye, aye. Uh -huh. opposed thank you that concludes the belt review committee report mr chairman thank you mr chambers item number one special use case uh on the mobile home has been postponed We're Rezone case number two, rezone uh, from R1 to an I3 to allow for a conditional use for mining and selling topsoil at property located west of Graham Avenue and north of Page Mill Road. Is the applicant here? Hi, right, Josh with uh, Mitten Engineering. I'm representing the applicant. Does everyone have a plan sheet? I have a few extras. Large scale, if anybody doesn't. The only thing that's changed on this plan sheet after talking to uh, Chris Wilburn was the, uh, the typical section of the property. We changed that slope from a three to one to a four to one, and that takes us out of any requirements for a hillside encroachment ordinance. Ms. Chambers? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm, I'm a big fan of regular edges and the southwestern edge of the excavation to me would be make more sense and be less abusive to the neighborhood if it had a more regular edge to it does that okay make, yeah does just that make straight, straighten it out instead straighten of having it out it. some as opposed sure. to zig zigzagging it getting as close to the properties as you can and, and then, things and that like was, that that's just kind of more to depict that we're going to have a minimum of a 50 foot natural vegetative buffer or I, I would feel areas. much better if it if it was that's not uh, a that's stated not a problem. natural vegetative buffer that followed a regular edge and, right. and, and had more depth here and there and protected the neighborhood. Right. Uh, also, I notice in your cross section and using my magnification function on my phone was able to read that the maximum depth is four feet. That's correct. Okay. Uh, previously stated was six or seven or eight or 12 or 50 or whatever. But uh, Well, again, it was recommended to avoid the hillside encroachment. Okay, so any idea of who's going to be out there measuring? Don't know how that standard will be. You no, know, does the city inspect or? Uh, okay, the city inspector. I don't think we have a dirt inspector. I, I don't know, um, but that that's what's approved. So that I mean that's what that's we're what's requesting. Proposed. That's what was proposed. That's what we're requesting. John, do you have any recommendations on how to? The, or a depth? <laughs> I mean, the city engineer's office has a, I mean, we, we issue grading permits. So, the, yes, there is someone out there inspecting it. So the answer is yes, there is somebody as of January 1st. So we are doing grading permits, and someone goes out and checks it. Okay. Mr. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Foster. How you're you're saying a maximum you're going to be excavating out of this area is four feet? How does that four feet uh, relate to the the lake in the back? I mean, it looks like to me we're going to be extending the lake into this property. The idea is this is not going to be a lake. Uh, this this will be an area that's going to be precision leveled, which I believe ultimately will be used for agricultural purposes. Uh, uh, we're not. It's not going to be have hold water all the time. Now it will, in fact you know, act as a detention pond, a large detention pond under a heavy rain event. But the idea is not to hold water all the time in this. What would the elevation difference be between where the, the edge of the lake and 
kind of the south corner. Do you know what the elevation difference there will be? I, I'm, so, I, I see it's marked on here. I think that's marked on here, but I can't read that. On the low point? Yeah. The extreme low point? It's going to be about six feet difference, and I think that's about 1,500 feet. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's going to be higher down here at the southeast corner than the lake? Well, lower. No, no. It's going to be about six, about, uh, six feet lower of the southeast corner. If you go so all the water, the water that falls in this depressed area, you're going to be excavating. Is that which way is the water going to go? Go toward the lake? We've got a, and, and y'all may have it. I mean, I always got this a little, very tiny copy. Have you ever done a an, a, a, an elevation of what the level of the lake is? <coughs> uh, everything that we've I've taken has just been from pages. I mean, is all the rainwater that falls here, is it going to head to the no, lake? Everything's heading this way. Oh. There's, there's a really big ditch right here along the okay. east So with, when the lake overfills, it'll run across yes, this it's property? Yes, right across the property. We've got these slope arrows, and it's going to end up right here. The low point is approximately 240. That's four feet yeah. of cut. And up here, it's going to be about natural ground, 246. Okay, I see your elevations there now. What's going to what's going to keep uh, somebody from? Is this a spillway or something We're here? We have a pipe, and then also a spillway for a heavy rain event. So somebody could uh, close that spillway and create a big wetlands here. Then is, is that ultimate? Uh, uh, that's possible, but I don't believe that's the intention of the applicant. It's, it's so it could become a wetlands then, real easy. A mosquito farm? Is that what it's going to be? Looks like it might be become a mosquito farm. It's already bad out in that area anyhow. So this whole area back here is in the floodplain. Right. Oh yeah. And and we, you know, the, has flooding issues, and we we feel like this is going to help. You think it will help? It's, we're basically creating a giant detention pond. So all of this land will drain into it. Well, it's actually all drained this way. So this is going to kind of capture it before it gets yeah, to the residential we'll, area. We'll be removing approximately 130,000 cubic yards of material, about 30 acres. Um, just to clarify a question, it was stated or at, at the Development Review Committee that when complete, the land to the east of this property which is currently agricultural will be the same elevation this property with the same elevation as the land to the east which is agricultural but they're basically bringing this land down to match <coughs> land that has previously had soil removed from it right. so that's that's a state an accurate statement uh, according to the pages elevations yes i mean it, we're only going down four feet so plus or minus a four, foot yeah. I, again it wasn't surveyed no, that's my next question is exactly. what is the accuracy of pages? Plus or minus two feet, six feet, or it's half a foot? It's fairly accurate. But, okay. but again, you don't, get the, you don't get the actual shots of ele no, elevation no. shots like a survey. Yeah, this map illustrates my suggestion for regular edges. Okay. In the southeast Mr. Corner, Spencer, would you read way. staff comments yeah. to us? For <laughs> and uh, let me answer Don first. Yeah, I was just trying to square that off and square that off. Don, uh, the light, latest pages was done with LIDAR, so it's, it's fairly accurate. So okay. I would say six inches or something, but probably more, more than that. So it's, it's very accurate. And they, they spend money each, every three years to update the contour. So it's, it's, it should be fairly accurate. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one more Foster. question. Um, Mr. Spencer, I, you've studied this a lot, and I guess he's got a, uh, some kind of approval or has some conversation with our city engineer, Chris Welburn. Was, that wasn't to approve the grading here. That was just to approve, um, I guess, to make sure we don't have a hillside correct, cut yeah. issue here. So the, the question before the, uh, that sort of came out of the subdivision committee uh, was, is this a hillside cut? So the city engineer did a study and met with Josh to decide does it meet a hillside cut and their outcome was to make it four to one slope instead of three to one and that will get it out of the hillside cut department. So that was all that the city engineer was reviewing was what is it a hillside cut. 
Well, that, with that revision he's talked about, I mean, you, you still have apprehensions about this in some regards? Not, uh, the staff had issues with zoning the I-3. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, right. So, so that, that was our issues was, was the zoning. Uh, you know, we're supportive of agriculture. So if, okay. if the mm -hmm. real goal is to bring it back to agriculture, you know, we're, the staff is supportive of that. So your recommendation is, is not to approve it for the I, but give it a, uh, con, uh, what, a conditional use? We would rezone it. Right now it's zoned R1, which is right. the most right. restrictive, and you can't apply for a special use in R1. So we're recommending to go to R2 for the special with use. a special use with conditions that are, you guys can add more conditions to it at that. But then that will keep it residential so it's not industrial. So some future use could come in. So we'll keep it residential and you're allowed to do agriculture and residential. Have you discussed that with the applicant? Have you discussed that? that? The applicant is fine with that. Okay, you answered yeah. my question then. Um, now, I, I think this is the one that I've been contacted and uh, there's some, it's like there's some neighbors, uh, the neighborhood uh, concerns about uh, dust and, and not, not only that, but even uh, future development of the land, like this part about uh, uh, what, what they're going to turn the land into after the, all the mining is done and so there's there's been some concerns about that from the neighborhood and we it just matters what your definition of mining is so right now the definition of what they're wanting to call mining is four foot deep uh -huh. uh, but if if they were wanting to do a resident it's zoned r1 right now so if someone was wanting to do a residential subdivision we'd review it for a subdivision and they could put in that how many houses there and there'd be the same amount of dirt being moved and the same amount of dust that then a subdivision would have so there wouldn't be any any much difference than a subdivision leveling it out or leveling sure. it out for uh, agriculture but our okay. city has regulations that for to require contractors to control dust yes they're the, they're the same rules would apply but it wouldn't be any more or less than a normal development okay. right on right. that property okay, okay. Uh, what is your time frame to uh, excavate this. Probably less than five years. Ooh. Range of two to three years or whatever. Do it after, to, to not rush through it, I mean, to not, I mean, it takes, it's not easy to land level stuff. I mean, I have lasers and we, equipment. We need to come to the microphone. Yes, we're on please come TV. up and give us your name. To answer that, please answer it and, for us. And then, uh, can we have someone to comment on the uh, hours of operation, if you will, too? Okay. My name's Tim Mitchell. I'm the one that owns the property. The hours of operation, we can we can work with the area with the homes next to it. However, we need. If it needs to be eight o'clock or eight thirty or whatever, we need to do. If we need to shut down at four, no weekend stuff like that. I don't have an issue with that. None of that. Is going to be a problem. I've gone in and, and cleaned a lot of the trash and the cars and the dumping and the dope and and all that stuff. The people that were back there running them off the church. We did it for the church, and there was probably 150 people that were going through the gate that we took out of there. So I mean, we've worked with the church already, and they're happy. I mean, they're they're glad we did it. But yeah, any anything we have to do to to work with them. Mr. Mitten uh, has <clears throat> indicated that uh, you might be willing to uh, want to amend your application to an R2 special use. Yes, that, that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. But, I understand, but he actually has to say it out loud. Yes, sir, I would. I have no problem with that at all. Amending? I, is, yes. Amending to an R2 for a special use? Yes. Okay. Well, how does the timeline work? Is that why y'all ask how long the... No. Uh, Typically, the, the neighborhood uh, is going to be asked to put up with that from two to five years if a timeline is not put on it. Uh, you can put a timeline on it with special use. So if anyone wants to well, we, address that, you could. But Mr. Chairman, at this time, we're considering the zoning in the next special. case will be the special use. Yes, sir. Okay. So the application as amended will be to an R2 with a special use, or the application will be for an R2. Any comments made the commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was amended by the applicant, so therefore we don't have to 
that, is that right, Ms. Miller? He is making the motion to amend his application. We are voting on the application as amended. Very good. Please call the roll. Banks? No. Blasco? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Wallace? No. White? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. Okay, your application to rezone to an R2 has passed. So if you'll get with Mr. Spencer, he can tell you where to go on that. Mr. White? Are we not going to? That's the, the next, next item on the agenda. Okay. Sir? Thought I did. did. Does anyone have any comments they'd like to make? Thank you. On the, a uh, lot of comments. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and hear the comments and see if there is a motion to rescind to go back to it. Okay. Okay, I am uh, Melvin Peoples. I live at 712 Bradburn Road, and uh, my property is, uh, my house is right adjacent to the property that they're making reference to. And uh, I am uh, opposed to rezoning in any way and form. Uh, it is, it's a residential area, and uh, you know, we're just, there's a church uh, that's on one side of it, there's a school, and of course, they're uh, heavily populated with children. And uh, we have a mosquito farm that's already uh, right adjacent to us and uh, to rezone and uh, start uh, moving uh, created even a more uh, lower land area is just detrimental uh, you know, to the area and we're talking about a, uh, a timeline here two to five years yeah I'm 62 years old now I'll be 66 years old before this is this is done um, you know and I just uh, you know from a uh, you know, residential uh, standpoint uh, you know, I, I, I can't see the, the uh, need or reason, uh, you know, to I just turn a residential area into a uh, potential commercial area and uh, not knowing the disposition of the uh, land after this project is completed. Um, and, and there's uh, other issues that goes with that. And we're already located closer to the airport, and so we have noise already that's coming right across the house this day and night. Um, so that's just going to add uh, to that burden uh, of trying to live in that area. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. I'm Rebecca Brewer-Lewis, and I have property that joins uh, Mr. Mitchell. Also, I have property that I would like to address you folks about. It starts on Highway 70 where East Broadway ends and 161, there's a street that comes across Highway 70. My property starts there, goes down about 3,000 feet or so to Eureka Garden Road. All right, the east side, if, you went, if Eureka Garden Road went straight, it would go straight down my 60.4 acres, and then there are two 40s lying straight back behind that. That would be a road down my 80 acres. That last 40, uh, Mr. Mitchell's backs up against my 40 acres. Okay, you spoke about a mosquito farm. If the city would do what they are supposed to do, they would clean out all the drainage ditches on my place and the water that the city is allowing to go on that property would go in those drainage ditches to Faulkner Lake and a lot of problems would be solved. It would be pretty darn simple. Any construction person could tell you how simple that would be. And there are several places that the city is allowing floodwaters to go on my property. Not, I, I don't think that's quite legal because they're supposed to keep the drainage ditches cleaned out and they don't do that. And now concerning Mr. Mitchell's property, I have no problem with what Mr. Mitchell wants to do. The only thing I want, there are two roads that are old roads that have been there over 50 years. And when my husband was living, he accessed those roads to get into the back 40 of our property. 
Those roads have been closed, gated, and locked, and we have no access that way. Now, there's nothing back there I want to steal. I don't want to change anything. I just want to go back there and see that I'm holding the world together once in a while. And I would like to have a permanent easement on those two established roads. Ms. Lewis, you'd have to get with the owner and work that out. We have no control over that here. Well, what about the drainage? I mean, that, well, you know, the drainage that, that would be something that you the, folks and the council could take care of, right? It's been, to the, it's been to the city engineer, and he has looked at that. So if there's a problem there, he would be aware of it. They would have to take care of that. It would not be this uh, commission. Ha I'd have to go to the city engineer? Is yes, that what you're saying? That's correct. And what is his name? Chris Wilburn. Chris, Chris Wilburn. Okay. Yes, ma'am. North right. Rock City okay. Engineer's Office. Okay. Well, I have, no, I have no problem with what the Mitchells want to do. Okay. As long as they don't infringe on me, everything's cool. Okay. Thank you. Mr. White? I have a question. Ms. Tom? This property that we're talking about, is it already in the floodplain? Maybe Josh could ask. Part of it is. The, the south, the very south edge of it is in the floodplain. Uh, the, the north edge is not. Yeah. You're Just be looking at this. This looks like if you build a housing area in this area, it would always be flooded. It would be like Houston. Would, would that be your opinion? Because that's my opinion. If the water is going to go from here to here, and that problems with drainage out there, who would ever want to build a house on this property anyway? Exactly. And, I, and that's not the intent. I know that intents change 10 years down the road, but I don't believe that the Mitchells have any intention of ever developing this property for residential, commercial, or oh, any... Which, which they probably couldn't anyway. Right? right, it probably couldn't anyway, especially since we're taking something that's right at the floodplain and, and, and we're going down four feet, so... So, I guess my comment is on this is for the, the best use, it sounds like it's at, for agri, is what it's for. That's what we feel. I, I don't think there's any other use for this land. All the houses even adjoining it are the, the new FEMA map that came out a couple in, I think, 2015. All the houses next to it are in the flood. All of it is in the floodplain right now. All That's the houses, everything. Yeah. Mr. White, the last page of your packet the, with the purple is the floodplain map, is the flood map. So most of the lot is in that purple. So most of it's in the floodplain. Yep. There's nothing else that can be put there. And I think everybody in the community needs to know. Okay. Yeah, most of that subdivision is in the floodplain. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Foster? I want to make sure the gentleman that was up here bef before is concerned about the zoning there. Uh, I want to make sir, sure. Sir, please come back up. Where are they? I wanted to make sure you were aware that the property just to the north and northeast of this piece of property we're talking about, the subject property, is already zoned R2, and that's the zoning we disapprove for this piece of property. So it's consistent with its neighbor there on the, on the north and northeast of this piece of property. I just want to make sure you were aware of that. This is not, we didn't zone it something that's not customary or, or already exists in that area out there. I want to make sure you understood that. Thank you, but thank you for your comments. Okay, with those comments made before the vote, if, does anybody want to make a motion to rescind the previous vote and start again? A motion to reconsider. Motion to reconsider the anybody previous want to vote. make a motion to reconsider? I have a question for the city attorney. Uh, Chambers? Ms. Miller, uh, the previous vote was taken without public comment. Is that a legal vote? Do we need to rescind and then re-vote just to be sure we follow the rules of due process? Is that important or, or can we just go forward if no one wishes to change their vote? Well, I'm not sure regarding the public comment. I think that uh, Obviously, people have had an opportunity to comment. If there is anyone who wants to change their vote, then I would say we need to make a motion to reconsider. If no one wants to change their vote, 
then the vote could stand because there's not going to be because everyone has had an opportunity to speak on the matter, even though it was after the fact. So uh, the, what I was actually saying is, uh, because I believe Chairman Clifton was going to say, it, does anyone want to rescind? Yes. Is there a motion, would, will there be a motion to rescind? And I think the proper motion really is to reconsider. Okay. Is there a motion to reconsider the vote that was previously taken? And if no one wants to make such a motion, then the motion should stand. Okay, then the vote should stand. That's what I did then, motion to reconsider. Mr. Chambers had a comment. Is anyone want to make the motion to reconsider? It stands as stated in the previous vote. Okay. Okay, next item. So next item will be the, it was a conditional use, so it'll be now a special use for the same property to add conditions. Staff has recommended some conditions on the page. Uh, that's up to you to add to or to make any changes to that, those changes or those uh, okay. conditions. The special use will be to amend the special use for metalwork and custom, I'm sorry, no, uh, to amend the milling and selling of topsoil in the R2 zone west of Graham and Page Mill. Mm. Uh, Mr. Question, Chambers? Question for staff. Uh, does the applicant need to formally request that his conditional use be changed to a special use for the record? Yes. Okay. Okay. Please, uh, did you hear what was said? I believe so, so I need to Give us ask name. for a conditional use permit. No, I sir. I didn't special hear. use. A special use permit. Yeah. In place of the conditional in use. In place of a conditional permit. Yeah. In your name again for the record. Tim Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any comments from anyone in the audience on this? Any comments from any of the commissioners? There's, there's a yes, ma'am, please come up. Mr. White? Hey, Tim, can I ask you one more question? As far as row crops, are we talking about Bermuda grass? Are we talking about corn? Or Soybeans. 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 Thank you. Soybeans. While Mr. Mitchell's there, have you seen these comments or conditions? Have you seen this list? I don't believe so. I have not. Okay. Well, you would may have gotten, uh, your engineer would probably have gotten them at the design review committee meeting, would he not? No. He would not have considered the no. use. Okay. While they're looking, ma'am, come on up and give us your name, please. My name is Martha Capps, and I represent the Rose City Property Owners, uh, Rose City Neighborhood Association. We are off of um, Faulkner Lake Road, Broadway. Uh, this property, joins on the Greenlee and the uh, um, Brad, Bradburn edition. I'm sorry, my first time addressing you. Bradburn edition, and we, we do not, we are not in favor of rezoning this property to a, an I-3. It's residential and we, we don't feel that um, the, the track, we feel that the traffic and the, the dust and the dirt would, would create a bad environment for the residential. Okay, the application was amended from an I-3 to an R-2, which I think is what the zoning is there now. Okay. What he's asking for is a special use to use that property for mining of the dirt that's there. Whenever, in, whenever <clears throat> that operation is done, then it would go back if I'm getting this right, it would go back to row crop or agricultural and it would change the zoning back to that instead of the special use for mining. Okay. What state R2? Yes. Uh, well, Chairman. agriculture is different yeah. than R2. But still they would be hauling a lot of dirt. While this is going While on. While this yes, is going on. So you would have large trucks on the road early in the morning. You would have uh, dust and dirt all over the neighborhood, probably down the Delta Lawn where I live. Um, I am totally against hauling, having a dirt farm in the middle of Rose City. 
Okay. Thank you, Ms. Caps. Okay. Any other comments? Any comments from any of the commissioners? I have not. Yes, ma'am. Come up. <coughs> nervous so you have to bear with me I live on Graham give us your name please my name is Mary Legs I live on Graham I have lived in Rose City for 20 years and behind my house is where they're talking about doing all this dirty in farm right now if you go out there and look I've had to pay flood insurance all these years because of the neighborhood that I live in and during all this raining that we just had there's still water behind my house. And, and you know, and you start bringing in dirt and digging and stuff. We have a problem with the flooding down there as it is now. And I too am against doing whatever they, they want to do right now. This is a neighborhood that we have families that live there. And I don't think it's right that they are allowed to just bring this dirt, like she said, with trucks and things all the time, a day and night with the dust and everything. So I too am against this. Did you uh, hear the engineer talk about whenever, if they did this, they would excavate this out and the water that comes in out there now would have a different place to go? If they dig part of it out now, the water that's coming in now is coming into this lake and flooding. If they dig this out, it would have a different place to go and drop the level of water did you I, I i don't understand because right there in the bradburn's edition they have a a lake there now and they're complaining because it stops up all the time the beavers and stuff stop it up and that water back you know come back in their backyard and we got this little river thing down there that you're supposed to be pumping out you don't pump it out like it should be pumped out all the time and that back you know calls a overflow okay thank you any other comments from anyone in the audience mr there's chambers when yeah. she's come while she comes up all right you're here go ahead yeah hi i don't understand the whole process either but my name is kathy stewart and i live on bradburn road and i'm against these trucks and all it coming in and out as well i'm opposed to it as well okay thank you can I say something yeah, real just quick a to the people that... Hold on just a second. Ms. Chambers? Uh, I merely want to add as a condition uh, that the hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 8 to 5. Okay. If that's, that's an amendment to the list of conditions that we'd have to vote on. Okay. Is there a second for that amendment? Second. Okay. okay. On the amendment, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Mitchell. I just want the people that live there to understand we're, we're not coming through the, our entry is not through the subdivision. It's not through Bradburn Edition. If you look at the, I, I just don't know if they know because they haven't seen the map. We're coming off Texoma on the Page Mill. I, I'm afraid they think we're coming right through the middle of their subdivision and we're not. I just wanted to make sure they knew. Is Texoma, I don't remember, is that an improved road? Right. That's what I'll say. Yeah. Was it an approved road? Improved road? There is nothing on it. Okay. We, we need to be on the microphone and not okay. hollering. Excuse me, sir, but that road takes on takes a lot of those people to their resident. It goes in Texoma and go around to that neighborhood, still a neighborhood, because it's, okay. it's two entries on Bradford. We can come in the main by the school, a uh, Texoma and come there, come through there. It's not a home there, but uh, that's the road entrance to the to the, to the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Any other comment, Mr. White? Hey Tim, on your trucks, do they have the covers? Keep the dust down. Absolutely. Okay. That's required. Mr. Chambers. You know, a lot of them don't do it. <laughs> I know. Mr. Chambers. Yes, I, I, uh, Mr. Mitchell, have you seen the conditions? I'm reading it right now. Yes. Okay. Because I'm about to make a motion for approval of the special use 
with all 11 conditions. That includes the hours of operation Monday through Saturday, 8 to 5, plus 1 through 10, as shown. Uh, Sean, is there any wording or language that would help mitigate noise and or dust? Those are really, really, really hard to limit, particularly when the excavation is near residence. I know there's a 50 foot or more buffer. The legal department will add the normal statement. Well, it's this was a conditional use, now it's a special use, a special use statement that will say meet all city codes, state, federal. Okay. So those are all covered under county, state, federal, city codes. So okay. we, well, don't, I, we don't need to state them again. One of the conditions that uh, is on from the staff is uh, selling of topsoil is allowed for two years. I asked Mr. Mitchell, he said three to five years. So you, are you aware that you would have a two year window? Yes, sir. If that's what I'm reading, it, two years, and then if I need more time, do you come back and ask? You come for, back and ask. Yeah, that's. I read it. I read that it. would also build up trust. Right. That you're doing a good job. I understand. I think I understand. I don't see really anything on here that. Can't live with. The time's fine, eight to five. I'm fine with all that. Okay. Okay. Question. Okay, questions have been called. Well, so please special use include. You're calling the question of special use, including all 11 conditions. Okay, that's correct. As presented with the addition of the eight to five Monday, Monday through, through Saturday. Saturday. Yes, got that, Miss Keesla. With the condition of the eight to five Monday through Saturday. Yes. Okay, please call the roll. Thanks. Glasgow? Yes. Chambers? No. Dietz? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Wallace? No. White? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. Your application did pass. See Mr. Spencer and he can tell you um, where to go next. Mr. White? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Spencer. You think we could uh, send a note or a memo to Chris to, for him to go out and look to see if we do have drainage issues that ditches need to be cleaned out? I know that's not our responsibility, but well, I know that you probably... Well, I know the one lady's going to call him tomorrow, probably. But yes, I'll follow up, too. We follow up and yeah. also to make sure that this water does change and it actually alleviates some of the problems. Yeah. So uh, they'll have to submit for a grading permit for moving dirt. So the city engineer will, yeah, that'll be Chris. But they'll have to submit a little more detailed drawings than, than that. Okay. So. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> next on the agenda is rezone case number 2018-5 to rezone from C3 to R1 to amend the land use plan from community shopping to single family to allow for a single family of residence. Is the applicant here? Yes, please come up. Good afternoon. Just a second, we'll give them time to move out. Okay. We skip, we skip one. Yeah. Go ahead and do it while you got him up here. Okay. We'll go ahead with this one while we're up. We're doing five. We're doing five. Then we'll do two. Okay, go ahead and give us your name again, please, sir. My name is Rudy Ely. And tell us what you're wanting to do. I uh, would like to change the uh, uh, zone from uh, the C3 to uh, R1 to allow for one single family residence. Just give you back a, a, a bit of history. This parcel used to be uh, part of the. Excuse me uh, just a minute, please. You're talking about a mobile home out on Fortnite Lake Road? No, sir. No, sir. Number this one down here. I Wrong place. Right here, but I, 
I don't have any paperwork on it. Do y'all? Okay. Archer, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this parcel was a part of the uh, uh, Austin Lakes uh, and uh, I've forgotten the name of the place. Anyways, it was was approved for uh, commercial several years back, uh, and uh, all that whole thing has just kind of fell apart, and all that land's been sold off and broken up. Uh, but this parcel joins the five acres that I already own there, and uh, it has zero commercial value uh, where it is. It's on a gravel road. Uh, there's only just a one way in, one way out, and uh, I'd like to build a house on it rather than some commercial enterprise. I truly didn't want somebody to come in there and build a junkyard in right there beside my my house. So, okay, Mr. Good motivation for buying it. Have you had any comments from any of the neighbors, Mr. Smith? Mm -hmm. I have not. Most people are supportive of resident of residents being there instead of a commercial business. Any comments from anyone in the audience on this application? Mr. Chambers? Ms. Belasco, isn't this important? Your neck of the woods? No? no. Am I in the wrong neighborhood? No. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? On the application, please call the roll. Thanks. Belasco? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Wallace? Yes. White? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. The application did pass. So get Thank Mr. Spencer, he can tell you what to do. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Call, call him tomorrow. Now then, we'll go to uh, number four on our agenda. Conditional use case number 2018-2. For a metal work and custom fabrication in a C4 zone to allow for a garage door on the front of the building. Yes, sir. Is, uh, have you saw the recommendations from the design review committee? We have. And you're in agreement with those? The owner is right here and he said he's in agreement, yes. Okay, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this application? Any comments from any of the commissioners? On the application, please call the roll. Banks? Yes. Blasco? Yes. Chambers? Yes. Dietz? Yes. Foster? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Wallace? Yes. White? Yes. Chairman Clifton? Yes. The application did pass. Mr. Spencer, thank you. We will move into our public comment section of the meeting. Anyone? Motion? Motion we adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion made and seconded. We adjourn. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Hey, Sean, you think Tim will want to be